Namaste everyone. Welcome to Geography Session 6, where today we are going to be discussing about the Earth's internal structure. So far, we have taken a dive into the whole universe. We have tried to explore all the stars there are and we finally came into the solar system. In the solar system, we discussed facts and figures about each and every particular planet, the asteroid belt, the Kuiper belt, everything. And finally, we came into the Earth. When we came into the Earth, we started studying that geography means geography, meaning to say study of the Earth. And we finally also discussed the motions of the Earth, that is how the Earth moves, what is the shape of the Earth, the, what is the rotation like, what is the revolution like. And then we started seeing about the lines, the imaginary lines, the what are the vertical lines called, what is the horizontal lines called, what is the latitudes, what is the longitudes. Now, in this session, we will be taking a dive into earth. And when I say dive into earth, we will be looking at the layers, the concentric layers, which the earth is made of. Right? So, if we look into the anatomy of the earth, that is, if we almost cut the earth like a cake and we see that earth is made of some concentric layers. These concentric layers are made of three broad headings. The first one and the outermost one is called as the crust. The second one and the broadest one in terms of the mass and volume and everything is the mantle and the innermost layer is called as the core. So, this is what earth is made of. This is the anatomy of the earth which is crust plus mantle plus core with core being the innermost layer from where our journey into what exactly these things are made of, what is the composition, what is the temperature, what is the pressure like, all of these things, we will begin our journey with core, right? So, what exactly is the core, right? It is the innermost layer. It is the layer which is right here at the innermost, innermost layer, okay? Now, the core itself is made of two layers, Okay, it might be surprising that the core itself is made of two layers. The innermost layer is the solid part and the outermost layer like the outer core is the liquid or the molten part. Now, how did this come about? See, we have to understand certain characteristics of core to understand this. Now, core is made of temperature which is almost 5200 degrees Celsius. Now, this is not just a number. You have to try to imagine this that right now the temperature is maybe around 30 degrees in Bangalore. Okay, but imagine this, that the core is 5200 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine the heat there? We would almost burn instantaneously. At 40 degrees, we cannot survive. How would we even survive? Like at 5200 degrees, that is the temperature of the core. Now, if we try to imagine this, see uh, this phone, Okay, if I have to like crush this, if I have to crush this, this is one atmospheric pressure, whatever the atmosphere is exerting, there is one atmospheric pressure. Maybe if I am exerting it like this, there is two atmospheric pressure. And maybe if I properly, you know, crush this, there is three atmospheric pressure. Now, at a certain pressure, this phone would probably break. Now, imagine 3.6 million times the pressure, 3.6 million times the pressure, how would the pressure even be? Right, like humongous, humongous kind of pressure. And because of this pressure, okay, what is going to happen? All these elements of whatever is there is going to be drawn towards the center. Speaking of these elements, what are the elements which are being going to be there? There are there's going to be two main elements. Okay, these two, two main elements, the first one being iron and the second one being nickel. Okay, since iron is called as Fe. And this is Ni together through we give it one nickname which is called as knife. Okay, so usually this is one denotion of what exactly the core is made of knife. So usually it is seen that iron is 89%, nickel is 6%. So you might get a question. See, boss, 89%, 6% gives 95%. Whom are you trying to fool us? Okay, why are you trying to do this? What happened to the remaining 5%? See, what happens to the remaining 5% is that there are certain oxides of silica, magnesium and all of this. This makes up the remaining 5%. But over and over, broadly, what are the elements? Iron and nickel. 
ओके सो दिस मेक्स अप 95 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल मास और टोटल एलिमेंट्स नाउ वी ऑलरेडी सॉ दैट देर इज 5200 डिग्री सेल्सियस वी ऑलरेडी सॉ दैट देर इज 3.6 मिलियन टाइम्स द एटमॉस्फेरिक प्रेशर व्हाट इज द एलिमेंट्स व्हिच आर देयर आयरन एंड निकल नाउ आयरन इन निकल आयरन यू नो दैट इट हैज मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इंटेंस प्रेशर एंड इंटेंस हीट व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन अर्थ इज ऑलरेडी स्पिनिंग and this much of pressure is going to be added here and because of all of this pressure what happens all these elements start getting attracted towards the center and once it starts getting attracted slowly slowly it starts a ball it starts to form like a ball and once this ball is getting formed what happens the inner part becomes solid but this circling doesn't stop the molten magma around it doesn't stop goes on circling 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 and ultimately what happens this entire swirling of this molten magma around it okay that encompasses the outer core that solid because of the pressure whatever elements are attracted towards the center because of the gravity and all the pressure okay the gravity which is formed that eventually becomes the inner core i hope this is clear the inner core is solid the outer core is molten okay now the core almost has one third of the earth's mass we are talking of the earth's mass not in terms of length but if we take the whole mass of the earth that is how much the earth weighs okay so even though core is very small it is still one third of the earth's mass because it's very heavy in terms of the pressure and gravity and everything it makes it very heavy so it encompasses one third of the earth's mass right and the nevertheless even though it is small i told you that it is small even though it is small it is larger than mars as a planet it is bigger than the planet mars okay now if we have to see inner core is the deepest part of the earth i told you that it is solid and it contains both knife that is nickel and iron it is because of this that the center of the earth it becomes almost like a bar magnet it becomes like a compass and it starts to get its geomagnetism from here okay it is the source of geomagnetism which we'll be discussing in our future classes now it generates a magnetic field that protects the earth from flying out of orbit usually you see that there is a lot of circling here and what happens is that this orbit that magnetic pole of north pole and magnetic south pole is generated because of geomagnetism when we come to the outer core we see that from the crust almost 2890 kilometers okay that is where the outer core starts and the outer core like i told you is liquid it is molten it is like a molten metal which keeps on rotating and swirling around the inner core now what is this made of same elements same elements no confusion this is in molten nature that is in solid nature that's all you have to know okay what is the what is the composition same thing iron nickel called as knife together okay what is the celsius it is from 2000 degree to 5000 degree celsius it is as hot as the surface of the earth you might probably not believe it but it is that hot okay 2000 to 5000 degree celsius 5000 degrees and all is almost sometimes more hotter than the sun itself so the core aspect of the uh, the core aspect of the core is actually so hot that it is actually more hotter than the sun itself right from 2900 kilometers to 5550 kilometers up till the surface of the earth is what we call as the outer core right i hope this is clear it is molten in nature now you might again get this question 2900 kilometers to 5150 kilometers how did you get this how did you get this particular number do you know have you gone inside and seen how do you did you have some measuring tape or something how do you exactly know okay for this we have to hold our horses a little bit we will definitely figure it out once we come to this chapter called earthquake and where we measure the direct sources indirect sources and everything okay so until then keep this question okay let it ponder in your mind it is completely all right but nevertheless think on these lines okay after this core aspect is done i mean the core aspect is done next after this we come to the mantle what exactly is the mantle okay it is a very big layer like almost you have to try to imagine it like this that 
you guys would have seen this, uh, you know, a slice of bread. Okay, the crust you would have seen that it is that small brown portion on the corner. The mantle would be the white portion all around inside. And maybe if you break one egg and if you put the yolk inside, how much yolk that space will take in the center, that will be the core. The remaining big portion will be the mantle itself. So pretty much it's the same depiction. If you can try to imagine this, almost 80% of the earth's mass in terms of the volume and 68% of the earth's, almost 80% of the earth's volume and 68% of the earth's mass is what? It's mantle, right? So what is the mantle exactly made of? See, one thing is, as we keep going below and below and below, what will increase? The pressure will increase because we just saw that temperature is 5000 degrees in the core. Okay, 5200 degrees. And we also saw that the pressure is so high. Okay, it is millions of times. Now, what does this indicate? As we keep going down and down, will the pressure increase or will it decrease? It will increase, right? Same way, over here also, there will be mantle, although is one big layer, you should not see it like all of the mantle behaves very uniformly. As the mantle keeps going below and below and below, what is going to increase? Pressure is going to increase, density is going to increase, temperature is going to increase and everything is going to increase. Right? Now, what is the composition of mantle? See, composition of mantle is very simple. There are two elements which is called as silica and magnesium. Okay, these are the two elements silica magnesium but this silica and magnesium will it behave same way if it if it is subjected to 100 times the atmospheric pressure and the same silica and magnesium is subjected to let's say some uh, 50000 times the atmospheric pressure it's obviously going to behave differently if there is more pressure it is going to form some kind of crystals if there is less pressure there will be less pressure there will not be so much of crystal formation okay i hope this is clear now, wherever the deeper reaches of the mantle is there, there what is going to be formed more? More crystals are going to be formed. What kind of crystals, boss, you might ask? What kind of crystals? See, the crystals, there are two crystal names which you have to remember. First one is called as olivine. And the second one is called as pyroxene. Okay. Two crystals you have to remember, olivine, pyroxene. Why, why does the crystals get formed? Because sema, when it keeps going down and down and down, what is going to happen? There is going to be more pressure which acts on it. More pressure, more crystal formation. What crystal? Olivine, pyroxene. Where is, where is it exactly? More deeper reaches of the mantle. Is it not going to be there in upper reaches of the mantle? It is going to be there. How much is going to be there? Lesser than the lower mantle. I hope that this is clear. Okay. Now, that we have seen this, we see that there is great temperature differences also from the bottom of the mantle to the top of the mantle. Why is that? Because top of the mantle is near the crust. The bottom of the mantle is near the core. What is the temperature of the core? 5200 degrees Celsius. Obviously, if it's so close to the core, it is going to burn. It is going to be extremely hot. Yes. Now, this whole mantle there is some churning activity, there is one small layer which is around some 50 to 80 kilometers in uh, depth. Okay, This layer is what causes all of the plates which we will see, the plate tectonics as we call it. There is movement on the surface of the earth. So this movement on the surface of the earth, this plates, it begins to move from one place to another place because of one layer, 50 to 80 kilometers layer which is almost plastic like, like imagine that you burn a plastic chair and you try to pull this, all this wiry kind of, you know, uh, substance starts coming. Now in a very similar fashion, what is going to happen in the, here also, there is going to be a very silver kind of a layer. It is going to be extremely hot. Okay. It is going to be radioactive. It is going to be molten. It is going to be plastic like layer. Okay. This layer is called as the asthenosphere. Where is the asthenosphere? It is in upper mantle only. Is it in the top portion of the upper mantle? No, no. But little bit down. If this is the upper mantle, this asthenosphere is going to be somewhere on the top, not on the extreme top. There is not going to be the layer which connects the crust and the mantle, but the asthenosphere is going to be over here. 
little down in the upper mantle itself. Okay. Now, coming to the asthenosphere, it is a very weak layer. Okay, when I say weak, I mean that it is weak because it is a very small layer. I just told you it's just 50 to 80 kilometers and in terms of earth, 50 to 80 kilometers is almost nothing. Right? And within the asthenosphere, the rocks are close enough to reach their melting points very fast. So, they easily get melted off. Okay? And they easily get deformed once it reaches the asthenosphere. And it's almost like wax. If you guys see plastic layer, wax. Okay? Now, what we call as the lower lithosphere is just that part which is ending where the asthenosphere begins and the other part which is the mesosphere or the mantle starts, the lower part of the mantle, right? So, I hope that what is asthenosphere is clear and where exactly is asthenosphere that is also clear, okay? Then after this, we come to the next layer which is the crust. Now, crust like I told you, it is very, very small layer on the outermost reach of the earth. It is almost like this line is there, no? This brown color line. That is all the layer of the crust is. It is just like the brown ending in the bread. Okay? That is all the crust is. That is how you have to imagine. The total mass of the uh, crust also is just some 1.14% of the total earth. Very, very small. Okay? Now, crust as it is, even though it is the outermost layer, it is still divided into two layers. One is the continental crust and the second one being oceanic crust. Now, see guys, the continental crust, the continental crust is also called as the felsic layer. The oceanic crust is also called as the melphic layer. I want you to remember these two names. Felsic layer, melphic layer. Felsic layer is the continental crust. Melphic layer is the oceanic crust. Okay. Always remember women empowerment. Women should be always on the top. So, remember that continental is over oceanic, right? Oceanic, continental. Continental is always on top of the oceanic. Felsic, women empowerment. Women are better than men. So, just remember. So, felsic layer is above melphic layer. Okay. If you have to denote this with female and male. Anyways, coming back, why do we call this as felsic layer? Why do we call this as melphic layer? Okay, because what is the constituent of oceanic crust? It is again CMA only. But what is the con this thing? What is the composition of continental layer? It is Cl plus feldspar. Since there is a lot of feldspar in the continental crust, we call this as the felsic layer, okay, because it has a lot of feldspar. Cl means silica and aluminium. Cma, you already know, it is silica and magnesium. What makes this Cma different from mantle Cma? There is more pressure, more temperature there, so more crystal formation in mantle. But in oceanic crust, there is less uh, pressure, less temperature. It is nowhere compared to the core. So, here also you have Cma nevertheless. But there is going to be less crystal formation. Why is that? Less temperature, less pressure. I hope that you understood this. Now, when we come to this, the thinnest layer, it ranges from 5 kilometers, hardly 5 kilometers to 50 kilometers thick in certain locations. Depending on region to region, there is some spatial variation. And the solid layer of the earth is where life exists. Now, it is mainly composed of oxygen, silica, aluminium and small amounts of these elements. Now, you see that this whole thing, okay, this is what is the total constituents of minerals, which we will see in our upcoming classes. But you have to remember right now that this is a very important thing. The total continental crust is made of some 8-9 uh, elements and these elements make up almost all of the constituents of the continental crust. As you can see, this is the lithosphere, okay, it ends where plastic asthenosphere starts. This is the oceanic crust, 
okay which is slightly below the continental crust even on top of the himalayas everything is continental crust only but oceanic crust will reach to the abyss of the seas okay if you have to quickly go through what exactly are the differences between continental crust and oceanic crust see guys oceanic crust is what makes the ocean basins oceanic crust is what makes the ocean basins continental crust is pretty much what makes up the entire portion of the earth where we can survive okay so from the topest plateaus and mountains and plains everything is made of continental crust next one it is very rich in which one the oceanic crust is very rich in basaltic rocks why because a lot of volcanoes and everything comes and erupts in the middle of the ocean so it will be very rich in basalt okay but apart from this it has sema meaning to say silicon and magnesium but also remember it has rich deposits of calcium as well okay but over here there is a lot of these elements majority is silica and aluminium so because of this we call it as sial but along with that remember feldspar also because it's also called feldspar layer next after this oceanic crust it is almost 4 miles thick okay in most places and when it comes to continental crust it is almost 47 miles thick in some places depending on where it is like for example mountains it will be more thicker in some other places it will be less thicker in terms of the density which one do you think will be denser i just wanted to try and analyze this use your logic which one is going to be more thicker obviously the oceanic crust right why is that because it is the deeper layer mantle will be even more deeper core will be even more denser okay mantle will be like in terms of crust and mantle which will be more denser mantle will be more denser in terms of mantle and core which is going to be more denser the core is going to be more denser same way okay if we see the continental crust and the oceanic crust which is below oceanic crust is below so that is going to be more denser now you might ask that okay fine i understood that i understand that oceanic crust is deeper can you tell me the exact matrix of course that is what i'm here for okay see here the oceanic crust is around 3 g per cm cube okay that is the average density meaning to say if you say if you take the density of pacific ocean if you take the density of indian ocean if you take the density of southern ocean if you take the density of atlantic ocean and if you combine all of the average you get 3 0.0 3.0 gram per centimeter cube, cube that is the density if we take the continental crust that is the asia africa europe north america south america antarctica all of these if we take the average density and if we try to combine this it is going to be lesser how much lesser it is going to be 2.7 or 2.6 gram per centimeter cube around there 2.6 2.7 gram per centimeter cube so you almost see a 0.3 to 0.4 cm difference in terms of the density now when it comes to the age you see that this 200 million years old right because it is consistently the oceanic crust is being churned and the newer areas is going to go on being formed but when it comes to the continental crust we see that it is 4 billion times okay 4 billion years old which is very very old much much older than the continental crust okay so remember the oceanic crust is what is getting formed continental crust is what is formed so there is a difference between what is getting formed and what is formed right with this we have tried to figure out the entire characteristics of the core the characteristics of the mantle and the characteristics of the crust with this having said this the core the mantle and the crust we have more or less figured out how exactly the earth or the cake if we do a cross section of this particular earth like a cake what exactly we find inside okay understanding this is of key significance for understanding the next concept which is this concept called as discontinuity okay so what exactly is a discontinuity imagine that you are given a super power what super power would you like would you like that super power where you can run extremely fast like you know flash or would you like super strength like the superman 
or would you probably want a magical ring like green lantern or if you have to come to marvel would you want a special suit like iron man or would you want something where okay let's not get too much deviated just imagine that the superpower i am going to give you is the ability to pass through objects without feeling a thing you will not feel a bullet you will not feel a temperature you will not feel the pressure and you can just pass through it randomly and you will just pass through okay now you might understand or you might start speculating what would what do i do with the superpower okay now let's imagine that i ask you to take a dive into earth and see what is there okay now you might ask why should i need a superpower for this can't i just dig my way inside the earth and can't i just go inside no you can't why is that because see the earth as and when people in russia actually tried this apparently after some 10 kilometers of going or digging deep inside the earth so much of poisonous vapors and pressure and temperature started acting and despite the best of the best suits they could not just go deep inside the earth so our superpower will help us here now imagine that with the superpower i take a dip dive and we go deeper and deeper and deeper we see that as we go deeper there is a sudden change in temperature there is a sudden change in pressure and there is a sudden change in composition as there is a sudden change in temperature as there is a sudden change in pressure as there is a sudden change in composition what is going to happen immediately the continuity will break or i can tell that there will be a discontinuity okay let's try to understand this from the continental crust what is the composition cl in oceanic crust what will be the composition sea so is there a definite change in composition definitely yes is there a change in the temperature yes is there a change in the pressure yes so as and when we went from continental crust to oceanic crust did something change yes was there a break in continuity yes was there a discontinuity yes okay so what is a discontinuity it is a sudden change in temperature pressure and composition okay and the density where all of these things there is a sudden change there is a break in continuity we call this as a discontinuity okay now discontinuities happen in so many places in the earth from the felsic layer to the melfic layer or from the continental crust to the oceanic crust there is one discontinuity we'll see the name as we go down we see that the composition temperature pressure everything changes as the as we get to the asthenosphere as the asthenosphere approaches there also there is a discontinuity we'll check out the name again as we go a little deeper we see that the mantle also the temperature pressure and composition starts changing because we see that there are more crystals in the lower mantle okay as we go down from the mantle to the core again there is a change in again there is a change in temperature pressure composition density because here outer core is all molten inner core is solid again there is a discontinuity in temperature pressure okay density everything so wherever there is we call this as a discontinuity so what is a discontinuity guys it is sudden change in temperature pressure composition density right i hope that this is clear now we will look at the names it shouldn't be very hard now that we have understood the concept see between the felsic layer and the melfic layer or we can tell continental crust and oceanic crust or as given in the slide we can tell upper crust and lower crust also we call this as conrad discontinuity okay conrad discontinuity the continental crust and the oceanic crust as we go a little more down and down and down we see that we get one layer which is plastic molten radioactive layer which is called as the asthenosphere obviously everything changes again so the discontinuity between lower crust and upper mantle wherever asthenosphere starts that is called as mohorovic discontinuity okay mohorovic discontinuity and as we go down as we go down we see that in mantle also there is upper mantle there is lower mantle and between upper mantle and lower mantle there is one discontinuity which is called as repeti discontinuity what is it called it's called as repeti discontinuity repeti discontinuity is that discontinuity which separates the upper mantle to the lower mantle you go even more below you will find the outer core and in outer core or the mantle and the core what discontinuity is there we have the gutenberg discontinuity 
okay it's called as guttenberg discontinuity now guttenberg discontinuity is that discontinuity which discontinues the mantle to the core or you can even tell lower mantle to the outer core both are the same next outer core and inner core we call this as layman's discontinuity l e h m a n n layman's discontinuity right so if we have to try to memorize this just remember c m r i hope you guys have played gilli danda when you were young you played gilli danda so just remember that cmr is a college name in bangalore okay so just remember that there is a gilli danda competition here cmr gl conrad discontinuity moerowick discontinuity repetti discontinuity guttenberg discontinuity and layman's discontinuity okay conrad moerowick repetti guttenberg layman with this i think we have more or less covered the topic of discontinuity quite extensively now having said this okay we have finished what are the layers of earth which is the core which encompasses the inner core the outer core which is molten then we came to the mantle which is made of olivine pyroxene sema which gets more intensified when pressure happens there are more crystals there is more temperature more pressure it is maximum almost 82% of the volume 66 67% of the mass and then we came to the uh, asthenosphere which is like 50 to 80 kilometers molten radioactive uh, volcanic layer and then we came to the crust which is the felsic layer the melfic layer in the felsic layer the melfic layer we have the oceanic crust and the continental crust and we further started discontinuity we started uh, talking about the discontinuities discontinuities as in the upper crust and the lower crust okay where we saw that there is conrad discontinuity then we discussed about mohorovic discontinuity which starts with the asthenosphere then we came down to repetti discontinuity which differentiates between the upper mantle and the lower mantle then we came down a little bit and started talking about the core and the mantle which is guttenberg discontinuity the inner core outer core we talked about layman's discontinuity with this i hope that you have some kind of conceptual clarity right now about earth's internal structure and what exactly we find inside the earth and our journey inside was fruitful for you i hope to see you next time where we continue learning more such amazing geography lessons so this is us signing off thank you